Hello everyone, this is Chris from Spoon Graphics back again with another tutorial. This time I've got a photography themed tutorial where we'll be using Photoshop to create a cool photo effect that mimics some of the authentic effects photographers used to create back in the analog days of photography before the days of digital processing. The two effects we'll be combining are split toning and the matte look, which are really trendy styles at the moment thanks to filters such as Instagram, but you can also see these kind of effects all over fashion shots and hipster style culinary food photos. In the olden days, before you plugged your camera into your computer and downloaded your images, you had to process your camera film using various chemicals in a dark room. Before photographers could mess around with Photoshop blending modes, they'd experiment with chemical toners to produce different colours, which is where all these popular digital cross-processing effects come from. Other effects used to come from using different films and paper, and one effect we'll be mimicking in this tutorial is the washed out low contrast look from printing onto matte paper. But that's enough of the history lesson for now, let's get started and I'll talk through some of the effects as we go. So open up your chosen image in Adobe Photoshop. Now the easiest way to produce this matte effect is by adjusting the levels. Add a levels adjustment layer by selecting it from the icon at the bottom of the layers panel. This allows us to non-destructively edit the image unlike the standard image adjustments levels tool. Drag the shadows handle of the bottom slider inwards to reduce the contrast of the image and weaken the blacks to give the photo a cool washed out look. Then darken the shadows by dragging the normal shadows and mid-tone handles inwards on the main histogram. With just this one step we've already created a popular effect that's used on those trendy high fashion ads, but let's make a few more tweaks. Now black and white photography was much more common than colour photography and it also creates much more moody photos, so we add a black and white adjustment layer from the bottom of the layers panel to take out all the colour while retaining the contrast of the image. One of the most popular analogue effects is called split toning, where the print is bleached with a sepia toner which gives it that classic vintage brown look, followed by selenium which affects the darker shadows to give the image a harsh mix of bluey greys and orangey yellow tones. The result is a dejected mood which works great with photographs of abandoned ruins or any scene that you want to have a gloomy feeling. So to create this effect, add a curves adjustment layer in your Photoshop document. Change the drop down menu to the blue channel and we want to increase the blues in the shadows but decrease them in the highlights. So grab the start and end points of the curves graph and move them upwards for the shadows but downwards for the highlights. The highlights are looking a little bit too greeny now so switch to the green channel and bring down the amount of the green in the highlights by adjusting that curves graph. The effect is almost there but it looks a little bit too purple so switch to the red channel and bring down the red in the shadows to move the hue slightly further towards blue. And finally no analog style photo effects would be complete without a touch of film grain so go to layer new layer and change the mode to overlay then check the fill with 50% grey option. Go to filter noise and add noise and configure the settings to 10% then check the gaussian and chromatic options. So just those few steps finishes off the washed out matte split toning effect in Photoshop. If you enjoyed this tutorial I'd really appreciate a thumbs up on YouTube to help spread the word. Otherwise you can see more by subscribing either on YouTube or on my website at spoon.graphics for plenty more design tutorials for Photoshop and Illustrator. If you make use of this tutorial yourself I'd love to see your results on Twitter to at Chris Spooner. Otherwise thanks for watching and I'll catch you all later.